Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to do um, a quick introduction to Comfy UI interface, and uh, we will look at some uh, text to image and image to image uh, workflows. Um, so when you open uh, the URL link, um, this uh, I'm running this in uh, RunPod. Uh, so basically, what I did was I created a network volume, uh, started the pod, and using Jupyter Lab. Uh, connected uh, to this volume. Um, so it's basically visualized on an HTTP um, link like this. And in the back uh, background is running um, an NVIDIA RTX 4090 GPU unit with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, so this allows us to um, use GPUs for generative workflows to create images. And Comfy UI is built in a way uh, that is similar to Grasshopper, where you um, actually create uh, this sort of node-based connections um, to create your own custom workflows. Um, so I have created some uh, examples here on how we can use it. Uh, basically, the, um, the interface is very straightforward, so you can just navigate around. Uh, this is your canvas where you can um, uh, generate workflows. If you want to create something, you can double click here and just type in what you need um, as a node and you will be uh, prompted to um, uh, that node component so that you can use it. For instance, there's um, this is the case sampler that we're going to use for um, decoding um, our images uh, and controlling the sampling processes. Um, so let me actually show you what um, kind of a basic workflow does and how we can control it. So I have actually three uh, flows here, but I have disabled these two uh, by clicking on the checkpoint and uh, disabling it here. This button disables it. Um, so when, when I enable this and I hit run, uh, it's actually going to run this workflow, which generates text to image workflow. And for this one, I'm I have uh, a few different models that I have uploaded to my network volume that we can try. Uh, I'm going to start with Architecture Realmix, but also show you how we can uh, deploy different uh, models as well. Um, so what I wanted to do is, um, this is um, a custom model that is trained on architectural data sets, and um, we can use the clip encoder. Um, uh, clip is basically, um, uh, an abbreviation for contrastive language image pre-training, which means it creates a neural network that connects text and images. So um, Comfy UI basically interprets these text prompts so that the model knows what kind of image uh, it will generate. And we can uh, basically use positive and negative prompts. So if um, you can basically write in the things that you want to be in the image or um, the neural net um, keywords that will be activated and the negative prompts um, are the things that you don't want in the image. Now, uh, the empty latent image is basically dependent on uh, the model checkpoint that we use. Uh, since Architecture Realmix is trained on STXL, we can do one uh, megabyte images, which have uh, 1024 by 1024 uh, resolution. And I'm going to control the batch size here. So the batch size is how many numbers of images we want to generate. We're going to start with one. Uh, the K sampler um, is a node that controls the sampling process, so it affects sharpness, consistency, and creativity. Uh, you would normally use a random seed. Uh, the steps is basically um, how many diffusion steps you want to be applied to the image. Um, the CFG scale controls how strongly the model follows the prompt. Uh, so if you want um, basically the prompt to be to dictate the outcome, you want this. Uh, number to be um, to be over, let's say, 12. Uh, but normally, um, 7, 8, or 9 gives uh, kind of uh, good results. The sampler name uh, is basically the type of sampler we can use. Um, normally, I prefer Euler, but uh, you can also use uh, DPM, FAST, um, and other types of, um, uh, other types of samplers here. Um, the denoising and scheduler, the denoise basically is used most of the time when you have an input image that you want to um, first um, almost 
blend it with noise so that it could be reprocessed. Um, for this one, we don't need it to be other than one. Uh, so the VAE decode um, is basically converts the latent image back to um, a visible image. And this save image is basically going to just visualize the generated image and it will also save it with a prefix. So I can um, give it, uh, for instance, a name here and that will be um, saved inside the network volume uh, that I created. Okay, so I have network, a New York skyscraper and let's try run. So you can see here that this load checkpoint is activated right now. So it's loading our checkpoint. It will take some time to um, uh, for the GPU to receive um, the, um, the basically um, strengths or the weights of the trained model. And then once it's uploaded, the sampling process goes pretty straightforward. So now we basically have our first image. Um, so I also have uh, this section down here. Let me close it. So um, we can basically add different types of prompts here. So it's basically giving me uh, according to the input prompt. Um, let's say we want to create an office tower, urban cityscape, sunset, uh, forest, and um, let's say cars, maybe. And I'm going to create a batch size of four. So let's run this now. So we don't have that many sampling steps. So we are only running it 20, normally 30 is used. If you make it higher, sometimes it can also destroy the image, but um, okay, perfect. So this is basically generating a sunset rendering um, of office towers. So th this is pretty, um, pretty straightforward. And these are the types of images that you find in this model. Uh, let's switch it to something else. Let's switch it to, um, a juggernaut uh, Excel, which is also trained on architectural imagery and see what kind of result we will get with the same uh, type of prompt. So I'm going to run it. Now it's going to load the checkpoint, which basically is going to take some time. Um, so I would recommend working on the same checkpoint when you're kind of testing different prompts, uh, different parameters here as it takes some time. And if you want to see what's happening in the background, you can go down here. And this is uh, basically um, the Jupyter lab showing us what's happening um, with, the, uh, with the model, with the output. So it's still loading the checkpoint. This is a, this is a nine, uh, I think seven gigabyte um, model. Uh, the architecture real mix was uh, around two gigabytes. That's why it, it runs very fast. So it's, uh, I think it loaded it up. So once it switches to clip, it will move very fast to case sampler and you will be able to um, generate the images. Okay, so it's now moving to case sampler. So let's see what we, we're going to receive. All right, so I received basically a different type of imagery, right? So th this depends on the type of visual images that the model is trained on. Uh, so the juggernaut gave me uh, these sorts of images with the same prompt, right? So the, these are kind of the input parameters that will affect the outcome. So the model, um, the prompts, and these parameters here. Now I'm going to disable this and move down to another uh, workflow here. So I'm just going to enable this. And this one is a, a basic image to image uh, workflow um, where we can give it a sample image, give it some sort of um, prompt. In this case, you can also use um, like an AI engine if you want kind of a detailed description of, uh, of an image. And what this does is it basically processes this or compresses this uh, image. Um, into latent space so that this will become kind of uh, an abstract um, mathematical representation of the image. And then um, it will resample it using with the prompt that we have so that we will get it uh, as a different style. So um, let's see how this would work. So I'm, for this one, I'm going to use SDXL. 
Um, so let's run it. Now this model will have to be loaded into our GPU. So it's saying model weights are received and now it's uh, loading it up. We're actually using the model's clip encoder and auto encoders, and that's why it's taking some time to um, upload those into the system. But once they're loaded, you can see it um, moves forward very fast, and we are generating actually four images again. Um, so let's see with the with the prompt I give it. Um, so it's it's basically generating images that are similar. To this input image, you can see it basically recognizes this frontal perspectival view. Uh, some of the outcomes um, are kind of changed, uh, but these give me kind of similar uh, levels, similar types of uh, processes. Um, but this actually doesn't give that much control over uh, the type of output we do. Um, so we can only control it with the prompt, obviously, and with the input image. And one other part that I have here is the upscaler. So I'm just going to enable this segment here and we're going to use 4X Ultra Sharp upscaler. Uh, since the upscaler will take some time, let me reduce down the sampling to two. And maybe we input some other information here. So photorealistic early rendering, five, six story cubic cultural hub part museum. Maybe we add some more um, material description here so we can um, brick panels uh, wood texture and glass let's see if this would uh, give it some more um, control over the output of this image so now you can see once the model is loaded it moves very fast okay I'm I got a lot of um, glass output and um, it is not reading this image but it's kind of creating visually uh, similar images to my input image now these are uh, high resolution so once we use the upscale it will take the initial image and it will increase the resolution so you can see um, these are basically the two upscaled images and um, initially the SDXL will create one megabit images and the upscale, um, uh, basically, if we do 50%, uh, it will just double up the resolution. Okay, so I'm going to move to the last uh, section of this uh, tutorial, um, which is in painting. So let's say you want to have more control over which part of the image um, you want to adjust. Um, so we're, for this one, we're going to use STXL again. Um, and what I want to do is um, use let's say an architectural image and have some of the parts removed um, uh, with transparency so that these parts are deleted so you have to save this as a png image and uh, what the uh, this workflow will do is it will replace those parts um, with um, with basically whatever we want to place there right so it will just affect these gray areas and um, for this one, I'm basically using in painting, so it will take uh, these boundaries and it will grow it by six pixels and it will create a mask, and that will become our latent space. And um, whatever prompt you're inputting here, it will basically affect uh, the generative outcome of the pixels there. So what I want to place is gardens, trees, uh, green balconies, terrace, uh, green architecture. So I gave it some keywords here. Um, and that will basically be populated in these areas that are marked. 
Okay, so let's see um, what happens when we run this. Um, the other, okay, so let's turn the other um, parts of the script off. And since the model is already uploaded, this moves forward very fast. And um, initially, it basically didn't recognize this as, um, uh, you can see it's generating kind of an abstract architectural image. Um, but let's try running it again and see what we get. Okay, so it's um, now doing more green, less gardens. Um, let's see if we can maybe increase the CFG as well. Let's do CFG as 12. And we can do green spaces, garden, trees. Yeah, so it's, um, it's not recognizing the scale of these windows, but it's trying to generate some sort of uh, green moss or, um, or treatment. Uh, in these pixels, right? So if you put it side by side, those are the masks that we initially input. So um, we could also do something else. For instance, we could do wooden panels, um, architecture, facade, um, texture. Let's try these. Um, So yeah, I mean, it's, it's not recognizing the horizontality of the image as much. Uh, what I want to also do is maybe we can uh, repeat the latent by a bunch of times. So let's do the repeat latent batch here. And let's run this four times so that we get four different treatments of the image. Sometimes these keywords may not generate the result we want. Um, and you can also do like have a more detailed prompt generated by um, AI so that you, it, can, it can give you more detailing. So let's see. Um, okay, so now I got four. It's, it actually got a bit better. So you can see it generated wooden panels, but still it's not recognizing the scale uh, that we want. We basically gave it. This is interesting. It it basically blended it with the sky, and it kind of distorted the images here. Um, but it could be a workflow that you can test um, to replace some parts of an image, basically, um, so that um, you you can basically create collages or different types of AI embedded outputs for um, image manipulation. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, so I. We're basically going to do um, a bit more tutorials on this topic, uh, but essentially this is your basic Comfy UI interface. Uh, this is where you run the scripts. Be careful not to run multiple steps at the same time, so you can enable and disable here. And um, if you want to, let's say, generate a different workflow, you can basically uh, save it here. So go to workflow, save or save as. And you can also open um, different workflows that you saved, or sometimes the image of the workflow will be enough to upload a different um, different script. Uh, so for instance, if um, you want to see your existing workflows, I have other workflows here, uh, like this is kind of another testing workflow, very, very basic. Um, you can go through the inventory here. The models will be... Uh, loaded up here. So if you go to checkpoints, these are the, the four checkpoints that I had. And other types of models will be uploaded here, like text encoders, for instance, or LoRa's. Uh, so you can also check them from here. Okay, so um, let me go back to this tab uh, that we looked at. And we're also going to look at some other things like the, how the manager works. Uh, but this is um, this was kind of an introductory video. So I hope this will be helpful in uh, using some of the Comfy UI uh, tools.